Praise the Lord, hallelujah, 4.14 p.m. out here on the west coast of Northern California, um, where Jesus Christ is being glorified, um, August 19th, 2012, a Sunday, everybody sit down, relax, get something to drink, we are going to be reading from Romans 8, amen. We're fasting tomorrow. That is now on my featured page. As a reminder, please share it with everybody. I'm believing for 40 people. Um, and I'm uploading. A testimony is uploaded right now. If not, let me check. My wife received a miracle healing right here and during home church. Powerful testimony. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So. You know, if you don't have a church that you found to fit in with yet, let let me just speak the word of God. I mean, because how many people know it's God's word? We're just down here as servants. Churches are just buildings with people with God's spirit in them. We're going to read from Romans 8. You know, I don't believe I've ever taught on Romans 8, although I quote it more than any other chapter uh, in the whole Holy Word. I find that amazing that I love it so much that I mean anytime anybody starts speaking about anything about it I immediately say that's Romans 8 I mean I I, th I mean we're gonna do Romans 8 today because it's on my heart to uh, to to share this with you you know I believe God wants to uplift us today I believe that I am called to encourage and exhort and edify you through what? Through God's word. Through prayer. Consecrating a fast. You know, speaking peace and life and shalom. And, and God's love and mercy and grace over you. So, first of all, I'll, I'll begin reading uh, Romans 8. But in, in, in order to understand fully Romans 8. And, and I bet you I'm not the only one. Raise your hand if you love Romans 8 <laughs> too, and read it often, and quote it often, and speak the <laughs> those scriptures often. And as I read it, you're going to recognize some of the scriptures, and you're going to be like, that's Romans 8. But if you didn't know, you're going to know when this is over with. Amen? I'm telling you, I, I'm just excited. You know, it's an exciting time to live in. There's a lot of people promoting and pumping fear. That, let's differentiate between me sounding the alarm that a sword is coming and us being afraid of what is coming. The, the sounding the alarm and the sword should not produce fear. It should produce excitement that Jesus is coming again and he's simply fulfilling what he said he would do. God shall do what he promised to do. The good and the bad, but we have inherited the good. Amen. So, yeah, yeah, there's fires, there's earthquakes, there's tribulations, there's distress of the nations, and there is a war coming. But but he who abides in the secret place of the Most High is going to uh, just be in the, the, the shadow of the Almighty God and, and surrounded and protected by angels. No, no evil shall befall you, nor shall it come near your dwelling place. Well, you know, I'm dwelling in Jesus Christ. And wherever I go, Jesus Christ is with me. So he abides in me and I abide with him. So yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'm not going to fear any evil. I'm not, matter of fact, I'm not going to fear anything but God. Because Jesus Christ dwells within me. He's the dwell amongst us, God. He's Emmanuel, God with us, man. Okay, let's... <laughs> I just want to get that straight. When I sound the alarm, I ain't sounding it in fear. I'm excited today. I'm so excited. My exciting is spreading to the whole household. My dogs are jumping up and down. The excitement in the Lord, uh, rejoicing and being exceedingly glad is, uh, is a wonderful thing. You know what it says? It says, I trust God. That's what excitement in, in, in times of peril and distress, that's what that says. It says that I trust God. I trust Him through the storms. You could go that way. You're good. That's my wife who I'm uploading a testimony who is now at 50%. This testimony is going to touch a lot of people, uh, in, including a couple pastors and Amen. It's going to go around the world. So in order to understand uh, Romans 8 and fully get excited about it, 
read Romans 7. You know, I'm being honest. The, the, of course, I'm being honest. <laughs> Uh, uh, there's some joy in there's a presence of peace and joy how many people woke up with peace and joy in your heart how many people know that's the very nature of Jesus Christ um, let me uh, um, Hold on, I'm getting a phone call here. Okay, so now that we're past that distraction and moving on to things of the Lord and excitement and joy. Roman, <laughs> that's just, in the name of Jesus, every distraction and every demon must leave this house. So I'm just going to read just a snippet of Romans 7 because the Amen just got, the Holy Spirit will put me right back on track. When you resist the devil, that distraction will leave. You will watch it on this channel. I don't restart and start over. I let you see the distraction. This ministry is a little different. I let you actually see the distraction and see the Holy Spirit refocus me right onto the eyes of Jesus Christ. That's what he does. He leads you and guides you and comforts you. And then he reminds you of exactly where you were at and what his word. On, on Romans 7, God asked me, he challenged me one time to do a thing on Romans 7 and I read it. I'm like, you want me to really dissect and put that out? And you know, it took like a week and I studied and studied and, and I, I still was like <laughs> this is a this is it's it's actually two parts if you want to find it on here it's two parts um there's a did you hear that message oh there's a message on the answer machine um okay <clears throat> so if you want to find that two part message on Romans 7 let me just read a little bit of snippets of it, of how you can see where Paul was before he wrote this next letter. Because that's what they are, letters. He says, uh, he's talking about this, uh, I find then a law that exists, that, that evil is present with me. Just grasp these words of what he must be going through. Uh, uh, evil is present with me, the one who wills to do good. For I delight in the law of God according to the inward man. But I see another law in my members warning, warring against the law of my mind. He's having a battle in his mind against uh, his flesh and his spirit. And it's bringing into captivity the law of sin which is in his members. But see, we're free. We're, that's what we're going to lead right into. He said, oh, wretched man that I am. But you're going to notice in, in, that he made it through that that battle. And in, in, in Romans 8, what I read about it is it's just nothing but love and mercy and grace and forgiveness. And that we're free from the law and, and condemnation. And so... Uh, you know, for example, he one of the things that, that was really hard for me, I, I heard it over and over, because, you know, the law can't save you from sin. He said, is the law sin? Certainly not. Uh, he, he makes this profound statement of pure honesty. Uh, I'm trying to find it on here. He said, he said, for what I am doing, I do not understand. Now, now I, it took me a, a week to break this down into two parts. Now, now listen to this. Uh, for what I will to do, that I do not practice. And what I hate, that I do. And, and he's like, you know, if, uh, if then I do what I will not to do, I agree with the law that it is good. But now it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells in me. See, that which I long to do, I do not. And, and how many people know that his spirit and his whole ministry was about doing good? And what he longed to do, he kept finding himself doing not because he kept getting into this bondage of the flesh. And, and so let's go into, and he's saying, oh, wretched man that I am. In other words, what, what this human nature of mine that's just bound to sin and the law, you know, uh, it, it's just, this is a tough walk. That's, that's what, I mean, and he's just having this battle in his mind, but, uh, 
And, and, and like I said, I'm, I'm not going to link to that. We're going to go straight into Romans 8. In Romans 8, you're going to find out that uh, it's, it's many people's favorite chapter of the Bible, including mine. It helps us understand the doctrine of what? Eternal security. And it's also loved by, by uh, even the Bible scholars. They love this. You know, entire uh, messages have been preached on this for for hundreds of years. It, it, you know, Paul was having an internal struggle in chapter seven, and then it, and then in, in in chapter eight, he just opened up with, "But there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus." In other words, he's letting you know uh, a, he had a breakthrough. Um, and then then there's so many verses, uh, you know. There's a lot of uh, there's a lot of, of wonderful truths that you can bring to your life from Romans eight. The beginning and the ending of the chapter will will help you understand the context and the content of all of the rest of the verses. The way it starts and the way it ends, everything in the middle is mercy and grace and love, and and it's only through Christ Jesus. See, there there's the only reason we're not condemned is through what Christ Jesus did. Uh, and that nothing can separate us from his love and he talks about how we're free from sin and death uh, but but how many people know Jesus Christ had to bear our sins and our death so he's he's rejoicing in that fact of what Jesus Christ did on the cross was able to let him worship him in spirit and in truth and that's how we can enjoy the mercy of God because we establish a relationship with Jesus Christ and we, we accept his uh, we accept his blood atonement and therefore we don't receive his separation and that's when we'll close out we'll find out that nothing can separate us from his love you know he even so we'll, we'll talk about the end here so let me let me just read Romans 8 uh, free from indwelling sin good time check here you know this is probably going to be an hour like I said relax because I'm in no hurry to some people honestly this is the only church they may get. There's people in Indonesia on my Facebook that watch these. Some of them they have to. Let's just let's just thank God for what we have. I mean, I woke up today. I thank God that I had another day. To me, that's a blessing. If if you're alive and you can hear my voice, that's a blessing. Some people didn't wake up today. Other people got calls at two o'clock in the morning. Is this a such and such residence? We need you to come down. We have some bad news. Thank God no calls came to this house last night. So I'm blessed. I'm blessed in the city. I'm blessed in the field. I'm blessed when I come. I'm blessed when I go. When I woke up, I was blessed. Why? Because I'm walking by faith and not by sight in obedience. So in Romans 8, he says, uh, There is therefore now no condemnation. Well, there is some condemnation in the world. But not to those who are in Christ Jesus. Differentiate that fact. And, and to break it down, he says, who do not walk according to the flesh. See, that's the battle he had in Romans 7, was he was explaining the battle of what? His flesh. And that's what this fast is going to do. We're going to crucify that flesh by drawing closer to God, which we will learn to worship him in spirit and truth. And a lot of people are going to, we're going we're gonna to go stronger after this fast. And we will do it regularly. We're gonna we're gonna live life like Jesus Christ is coming back tomorrow, but we're gonna enjoy life too. While we're down here, we're gonna have enjoyment. He said, "Rejoice." Okay, uh, it, if we're all sitting around doom and gloom and sadding and ceasing to exist because we're waiting for the word to end, are we truly rejoicing? That's a word for somebody right there. Uh, we don't walk according to the flesh, but walk according to the spirit. Let that begin today. We don't have to wait for tomorrow. It began this morning when my wife received a miracle healing. Amen. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Okay, first of all, can we make ourselves? Is this something that we can do ourselves to be free from both the law of sin which led to death? That's what the law does. You know, uh, sin, do you know sin began in the, in, in, in the Garden of Eden? Uh, and everybody since then, since Adam and Eve, inherited what sin and you know what sin too leads to death you know the Bible records that I just want to let you understand in case you think that somehow you're exempt from sin whoever may be watching this that you're exempt from sin that the Bible says for all all means everybody everybody born 
uh, for all have sinned and they fell short of God, uh, the glory of God. In other words, look, here's God's glory, here's you, you fell short. And, and, and so what are the penalty and punishment of that sin? Because you were born into it. As soon as you came out crying, you were a sinner. That's true. Amen. You came out and born uh, into sin. And the Bible records that the wages of sin, in other words, the punishment for that sin is death. But Jesus Christ, he took and bore your sins through his blood. Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. A lot of pe people are still teaching in the year 2012 the law, but it's only through the blood sh shed on uh, by Jesus Christ that can set you free from sin and get you to heaven. There is no other way. That's right. There is no other way. And Paul realized this because he was a sinner. And you know, not only that, he was a murderer. And you know what? He was under the law. So somebody who'd been through something, they, 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 they go through battles and challenges. They have their ups and downs. But I'm telling you, their ups are really up. Because they've, they've, they've overcome and conquered something. And he's celebrating now this battle that he'd won with his flesh. To let you know uh, all of this. That he's free from the law of sin and death. Because uh, he's in Christ Jesus. And he has the spirit of Christ in him. I'm only on verse 3. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh. Which you know we crucify this flesh. Paul said I die daily. Did he really actually really, literally die and be raised again no he his he, he little bit of his flesh died every day as he walked closer to Jesus Christ in his relationship um, for what the law could not do and that it was weak through the flesh God did how by sending his own son capital S Jesus Christ in the likeness of sinful flesh in other words he was born from a woman without a father so this was a human born of a woman it had human DNA but it also had God's DNA Jesus Christ when he walked around he was both God and man and some people think that's blasphemy to call Jesus God well 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 whose DNA uh, created him he didn't have a biological father who was his father the creator of everything see that, that's why you will always see me on here in Christ dwells the fullness of the Godhead why because he was he was born with God's DNA and he and he was in the beginning and he was sent he was sent down here that implies that he was already up there right and then the Holy Spirit rested upon him when John baptized him so there you have a triune person but you got to understand he was also born human so he, that's why he ate he broke bread he told people to fast that implied that it, he was eating normally and then he would fast and you, when he fasted it was to dr draw closer to his relationship with God he even referred to him as the father he cried Jesus wept watch my video on Jesus wept um, uh, he hungered he even at one point was challenged he was stressed so bad in the garden of Gethsemane he was telling his disciples can't you just stay awake for me one hour now, you know he knew they're coming to kill him beat him flog him and look you know the only reason I'm doing it is for you guys I wish somebody could just get a breakthrough revelation right now we don't have to wait for tomorrow look what I'm doing is for you not for me I could just call down you know a trillion angels right now and just wreck this whole thing and you guys too you sinners you were born in sin you deserve to go to hell don't get this so some people they walk around with a sense of entitlement and see but not me I'm always challenging myself to realize that that is there by the grace of God go I I'm living in grace it's only through Jesus Christ that I can even get on here and talk about his love because without him calling me and dying for me and leaving heaven and coming down to earth and sweating so profusely that he began to bleed and he's begging them to just pray for him one hour and finally he said just go and sleep on because those that are coming to get me here they are but he never sinned he still loved him anyway I love the Lord so so yes he had a human uh, nature to him so if you're suffering with a you know a fear you're suffering with anxiety you're, you're suffering with the fear of death you're suffering with doubt what did Jesus Christ they say you know 
Father, if it is your uh, will, take this cup from me. See, we weren't there to really see the battle he had to go through knowing he was going to die. When he cried, he knew Lazarus had died. He realized death is real. And since I was born a human, I got to die too. And I'm dying for, for these people who won't even recognize me as, as the king of kings. True unconditional love. There's going to be a breakthrough today. Okay. He condemned sin in the flesh that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled. See, in order to, requ uh, to, to fulfill the law, <laughs> which I mean, if I'd have been alive under the law, I, I don't know if I could have been righteous enough in my own mind. Praise God for the mighty patriarchs like Abraham and Noah, you know. That, that the God, the, the word of God records because you had to be righteous. And see now, Isaiah 54, 17 says our righteousness comes from him. Read it, Isaiah 54, 17. Most people just read the no weapon formed against me shall be able to prosper, but they don't read the rest of the verse on to why it can't prosper. No weapon formed against me shall be able to prosper. Uh, and every tongue that rises up against me in judgment, uh, God will condemn. It says, Thou, thou being him, shalt condemn. For this is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. In other words, you're a servant, not some high and mighty exalted person. You're a servant of the Lord, and you inherited this through God's grace. And, and, and then it says, For his righteousness is of me. In other words, God's righteousness is the reason I'm righteousness, saith the what? Lord. Read the whole thing. Memorize a scripture today. I challenge you to take a full paragraph just like that, Isaiah 54, 17, and memorize and quote it often. It's living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal. I'm going to be lucky to get out of this Romans 8 because there's a movement upon the everybody feels it. See, everybody's feeling this move of God. So let's talk about uh, living in the flesh versus living in the spirit in verse 5, Romans 8, 5. And I'll put a link or open your Bible. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds of things of the flesh, but those who live according to the spirit, the things of the spirit. So how can you, how can you know whether you're living in the flesh or living in the spirit? Well, what if you put your mind on? Did you wake up singing the songs that you were set free of? Did you wake up considering doing the things uh, you know, uh, uh, do you used to do, or did you wake up praising God, thanking for Him for life, and just fall on your knees, begin to worship Him? Well, that's how you can tell by the fruit of your actions, right? Uh, I'll give you a quick example. I was challenged the other day with something that used to be a stronghold in my life. As a stronghold is a serious thing, but the, uh, you know, and and it became a temptation, and you know, it was something of the world. And if you let this thing tempt you over and over and over again, and you keep breaking it and breaking it and breaking it, well, now you have a stronghold that you have to address. But something just came over me, and I said, no. And I just began to focus on Jesus, and I just began to speak in tongues, and I just began to exalt God, and I just began to praise Him, and I began to renew my mind and focus on Him. And then, you know, and the next thing you know, I'm in the Spirit, and the whole thing had just vanished. And then I went on God on my knees and praised Him. Because, see, I couldn't have done that. But I'm free from, from that. So, so that's how you can know. You know, for example, I, I used to listen to Tupac a lot. Or, or ACDC and Judas Priest and, 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 and all kinds of different music. If I wake up and that comes into my mind, don't you know the devil put that? God didn't put that there. And, um, because that's the old man is dead. Your old nature is dead. It was crucified with Christ. And you are now a new creature in Christ Jesus. Well, if you wake up with that, and then you can literally follow that and start singing that, and then YouTube that song and watch that song, and then you will see in a lot of these flesh, earthly videos they are selling what drugs violence uh, uh, sex adultery fornication well the next thing you know halfway through the day you haven't thought of God at all you haven't thought about his word of all you haven't even acknowledged his presence and thank you for life you're living in the flesh and you do that for a week straight now you're wondering where's God he's right where he was you left him he didn't leave you can I get a witness Somebody? And the exact thing is opposite. If you wake up 
and God wakes you up at 3.30 in the morning, and you come out here and you give out a warning, and then you just fall on your knees and begin to praise God, the rest of your day is in the Spirit, well, it's just the fruit of your actions, it's just, it's, it, that's what was Paul was battling Romans in seven and Romans eight is him producing uh, this the, the the this this that he's a conqueror of this battle of living in the, the spirit because the next three days the twentieth twenty first and twenty second we're gonna be in the spirit we're gonna crucify this flesh right here is the flesh gonna la actually die no we're gonna worship God in spirit and in truth and you're gonna see a move of God in your life. I mean, okay, for cause six. Here, here's the, here's the, here's here's what uh, living in in the the flesh uh, will lead to uh, versus living in the spirit. For to be carnally minded, or in other words, fleshly and earthly minded, is death. But to be spiritually minded is what life and peace. That's why you will hear me say over here, I speak life over you. I speak peace over you. You know, you know, some people they will speak death over people, and not even realize it, and they don't even mean to do it. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God. In other words, if you're living in the flesh, uh, you can't please God. That's just the truth. For it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can it be. So then those, watch this. So verse 8, 8, 8. So those who are in the flesh cannot please God. So don't deceive yourself and don't let Satan deceive you. If you're living a fleshly life and you're lukewarm and you know that the Holy Spirit keeps convicting you over and over and over again of those, you know, whatever it is you may do that, that the Holy Spirit keeps telling you not to do and you just saw oh, one more day or one more week. Well, you know what? It, it, you're going to find that it's impossible to please God living with that mindset. You may think you're pleasing God, but what, what you need to look at is the fruit you are producing. See, we are to be fruit producers. Isn't that Jesus Christ said? He gives an example of these trees that are bearing fruit. And the trees that didn't bear fruit were cut down because they were good for nothing. So you got to look at your life and say, is it producing fruit? Amen. I'm telling you, this, 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 the people that are, I, I see on here that, that I, I like to surround myself with people I trust and, and depart from those who refuse to want to walk in the spirit. And, and, and I, and uh, I, I find that everybody I'm seeing, I'm seeing what? Fruit. It, it, why? Because it's coming from God. It, it's just our faith and obedience. Like this miracle testimony of a healing today. Verse 9. But you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. How? And remember I always said the if. Okay, if indeed the spirit of God dwells in you. Look, don't let anybody ever tell you. If you accepted Jesus Christ as your personal savior and received his free blood atonement for remission of your sins, and you know that, then his spirit dwells within you. Now you got to walk the rest of your walk out producing fruit and obedience. Amen? Uh... And if Christ is in you, it, 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 raise your hand if Jesus Christ is in you, and you know it. if you're happy, and you know what, clap your hands. The body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. What just happened was your flesh died to the world, and you put on Jesus Christ, according to Romans 13, at the very uh, last verse of the says, "Put you on the Lord Jesus Christ." You inherited uh, a new life in Christ. Through his righteousness. Uh, everybody say that my past is past. And that person doesn't exist anymore. And I'm never looking back. And I'm not going back to it. Have you ever heard that? I'm going to put a, I'm gonna put a link to one song on here. It's called I Won't Go Back by William McDowell. I'm not going back to the way I used to be. Hey Amen. No way. No way. No way. This is too exciting. He who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies. Through His Spirit who dwells in you, so so we we this is where in twelve we start talking about how we uh, we we uh, inherited this. You know, we inherited this through adoption, sonship through the Spirit. Verse twelve. Therefore, brethren, or in other words, people who are already in the body of Christ, brother, we are debtors. In other words, we're in debt. Well, what are we in debt? We're not in debt to the flesh to live according to the flesh, for. For if we, if you live according to the flesh, you will die. You know, if you go into Roman uh, Revelation 20, you will see that there's actually a spiritual death. That's what he's talking about. 
you're going to die. You're going to die a physical death and you're going to die a spiritual death. Lord, help us from that. Do not live in the flesh. And, and try to reach those and produce more fruit to get a crown of righteousness that's laid up for you, amen, that's yours by inheritance. Why not go after it? You ever played sports or you ever played anything where you just are challenged to go be the best that you can be at it? Why can't we do that for Jesus Christ? When we were in the world as sinners, man, we were the chief sinners. That's what Paul said. Among sinners, I was chief. Man, you want to talk about sin? And I used to go kill Christians at worship Christ. They were set free and I killed them. So you want to talk about sin? Oh, I, I got you beat on that. See, when he was in the world, he was good at sinning. So when he got, uh, uh, so and same thing with me, man. I, I went all the way into the occult. But I, when I, so now when you see me get on here on fire, there's a reason for that because I understand what 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 Jesus Christ is saying through Paul here. He, he, in, in the spirit, he's saying that he can do, you can do everything because you've inherited my love and grace through what I did, not what you did. And I forgive you. Why don't you learn to forgive yourself? And so now I'm sold out 100% for Christ. And I will do everything on here to talk about Christ to anybody willing to listen. And I give 110% more than I did as a sinner. Because when I was a sinner, I was going to to both a natural death and a spiritual death and now I'm going to eternal life in the mansion God actually showed me in he heaven Lord man I can be free from illnesses and free from infirmities and 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 you see this water I keep drinking it you're gonna see me drinking this all the time because I keep getting thirsty but Jesus Christ has living water that you will never thirst again we inherited that Saints do nothing we did of our own. We couldn't buy it. We couldn't work ourselves to to have, to be multimillionaires and then just go purchase a ticket to heaven. No, Jesus Christ did it. That's the difference between carnally minded and spirit minded. Focus on Romans eight. Matter of fact, tomorrow, read this. Uh, read Romans eight tomorrow during your fast. That's led by the Lord. Where are we at? <laughs> we're, we're in debt to the flesh, okay? For, uh, for, for if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, and you will live. For, for verse 14. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God. Look, God should always be in front of you, not behind you. Amen? The, all the armor is in the front. You walk it forward. Not backwards. The one, I, the ones I read in the Bible look back, perished, turned to salt, defeated. I know a lot of people actually in, in my natural life who went back to the the life and, and are now even in, in their forties. They are either in prison or dead. That's the the life. The people that I grew up with, uh, the gang or the clique or whatever you want to refer it to. My group of friends from high school that I hung around with, and there's people on Facebook that will see this. They will bear witness. They don't really talk much on here, but I know they listen. Um, that's about 40 minutes for me in, uh, towards the Bay Area. 50% of them, 50% if not 70%, are either dead or in prison. Amen. And the other 25% are, are challenged. So, do you understand the mercy and grace of why I get on here and shout? Because I'm maybe 10% of my whole class that God somehow had mercy on. And I don't know why. Well, part of the reason is I had a praying mother. You got a praying mother? Go tell her you love her and bring her some flowers, man. Praise God. Or father, anybody, uncle, aunt, sister. Verse 15, for you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear. So remember we talked about fear? I'm just flowing here. We are not in bondage to anything. That's what that's what this fast is going to set us free of. Addictions, bondages, anything. Uh, you know, I'm not in bondage to sodas. I'm not in bondage to have to have a cup of coffee in the morning. I'm not in bondage to have to take a... Uh, a drink at night to go to sleep anymore 
uh, and you know what? All those things will produce fear. There should be no fear in your life. We've already addressed that in a whole, I did a whole hour on doubt versus fear. But you receive the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. Everybody say that. Abba, Father. He adopted you as one of his own, what? Children. 16. The Spirit himself bears witness. In other words, with our spirit that we are children of God. In other words, you just know that you know that you know that there, the Holy Spirit is within you. There is no doubt. And that doubt and, and, uh, produces fruit of what? Love and patience. And you realize there's something different about me. And I, everybody else is talking to. There's something different about Brother Paul now. He's not the person that he used to be. That's because the Holy Spirit is bearing witness of your spirit. It, it will produce the fruit in very nature of what? Jesus Christ. And if so, if we're children, then we're heirs. Now, remember how he was all battled and challenged in seven? He's talking about look, I'm not only uh, an heir of God, but I'm a joint heir with Christ. If what? Here, here, here's a. Uh, uh, here, here's a scripture for you. If indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. You, have you suffered for Christ? Everybody raise your hand if you've had some challenges and battles and trials and tribulations in your life. Well, if you did it for Christ, then you, you should be praising God for it, That you, he even counted you worthy to suffer for him. That's what Paul's saying here. And so I'm going to address that. Verse 18. You know, because suffering produces glory. You ready for this? 18. For this is Apostle Paul preaching victory through Christ. For I consider that the suffering of this present time. So look, look, he's suffering right then or he wouldn't have said it, right? And he's pondering this. He's considering the suffering that he's going through right then. Are not worthy to be compared with the... They are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. For the earnest expectation of the creation eagerly waits for the revealing of the sons of God. So what are we awaiting for? Are we eagerly and earnestly expecting? The whole earth is travailing and expecting what? The return of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Because the creation itself, what is creation? Everything you see around you was created by God. He explains exactly what he created in the book of Genesis, which means the beginning. Because the creation itself also will be delivered, watch this, from the bondage of... Look, I need to have some order in here because I'm trying to put out a message. Please. Sometimes you just got to take control of a situation. We're talking about a holy, sovereign God right now. She's either outside or inside. This is how you got to be. You got to be bold in your walk with Christ. Just put her in the room. Uh, just give me five minutes and I'm done. We're going to give God some glory. Let's press on. I'm not going back. I'm not stopping. I'm not pausing. I'm pressing on. My dogs are acting up. Um, but, you know, th this is what we do. We all do for, for the glory of God. I'm just going to restart right back to 18. How much time I got? See, if, if we were in a, a, a big church of 5,000 people, you, would, this, you wouldn't see that kind of stuff. But how many people know it happens behind the scenes? They do it in secret. I've worked in a church with 5,000 people. You'd be surprised at the gossip and backbiting and slandering. That's why, look, if, if we're going to have church in here in our home, we're going to do it decently in order and realize, look, this is not just another YouTube message. This is a life-saving, life-changing a living word of God that's going to go around the world and so we're going to create a holy atmosphere in here and when distractions come we're going to be bold and strong don't think don't think that I'm angry or upset I'm just letting the devil know look no distractions are allowed in here while I'm talking about my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ because I will just get more bold 
because I know who I am in Christ Jesus. I've been called and appointed to represent Jesus Christ in his kingdom because I, 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 I'm walking by spirit and not by flesh. And, and I know that I have an inheritance to this. And so I'm tapping into that even stronger. And so when these distractions come against me, I would just take a, authority over them. And, and if you're in your church and you, and, and you see everybody looking around while the man up, or woman up there is giving a life-changing message and everybody's looking around, you know what they're doing? They're in the flesh distracted. Start watching. Well, no, don't. I, I take that back. Don't start watching them. <laughs> Stay focused. But uh, the reason why I say start watching is I used to do security and ushering and I'd sit in the back and I would just watch people. And some people just come, just came. This is a difference between serving God carnally minded and spiritually minded. Because I pray for them to get a breakthrough. Because, you know, the people, uh, is sick people that should go to church. The church should not be full of perfect people because then there would be, the. I see church as a, a place uh, where uh, of spiritual restoration where people come to get spiritually restored and reconciled uh, that need help. Not full of perfect people in perfect clothing acting perfectly. A matter of fact, there was a man. I don't know why I'm going there on this. There was a there's there's a, a story in the Bible where a man came into a church in fine apparel in a golden ring, and he was given special seating. And then there was a homeless man who said he was stinky. He stunk, and his clothes were tattered. And and that, those are the people I want to reach. Amen. Because God loves them. God so loves the world. And he he didn't command us to go give a cup of to a rich man. Matter of fact, he told the rich man, "You love money too much. You can't inherit the kingdom of the world unless you go sell everything you have." And he said, "I can't. I love my money too much." But that homeless man, they had him sit on the floor, and it said that they had broken every law and had sinned. They had broken literally every law. I'd have to go find that scripture again. But just go into some search and uh, and say a man dressed in fine apparel. Uh, in, in church and read that scripture that's for somebody because if you're going to a church like that where people get special VIP reserved seating in the front because of they have better clothes that's not of God it's time that, that's that's a lukewarm church uh, serving God carnally minded is it is it a sin to have good things no but are we to focus on the good things? No, we're to focus on what's holy and where God is no respecter of person. If God granted grace to someone like me, you know, why can't I grant grace to somebody uh, like that? That went way off of the... <laughs> but so where were we at here? Because the creation itself also will be delivered from the bondage of what? Corruption. So... As we fast, we're praying to be delivered of the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. you got to realize, we're, we're going after something we already have. That's the revelation there. Everything we have was done on the cross that we need. Is When he said it is finished, and you've heard me preach that message before, some people are striving to get something they already have through adoption. They just got to learn to receive it. And they will. Not only that, in 23 it says, but we also who have the first fruits of the Spirit. How many people know Jesus Christ is the first fruit? He's Lord of the first fruit. He's Lord of the Sabbath. He's Lord of all. He's King of Kings. Uh, where are we at here? We also have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves grown within ourselves, eagerly awaiting for the adoption, which is the redemption of our body. So in other words, that hasn't happened yet. Because uh, in, uh, in 22 it says, For we know that the whole creation groans and labors with birth pangs together until now. Until now, when? When he was still alive writing that through the Holy Spirit. Verse 24 says, For we were saved in this hope. What hope? Have you ever heard of the blessed hope? If you haven't, I suggest you look into it. We were, that, we were saved by a blessed hope. But hope that is seen is not hope. In other words, look, if God was right in front of you and Jesus Christ was standing next to you, that wouldn't require much faith to believe that they existed, would they? And we wonder why people can't believe, because some people only can... Uh, what was that? Ripley's Believe It or Not? Uh, how did that go? You must see it to believe it or something like that. 
uh, you know, you have to see it, or I forgot exactly what, because I'm not in the world or not, but it was in San Francisco. You know, basically, it was so miraculous of a, some kind of thing that you had to, to see it, to believe it. Well, I, I have, I've never seen God, and I've never seen Jesus Christ, but I still believe that he is, and he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. And I realized that I was saved by grace, and I'm living in grace, and that which produces faith. And you know what? Faith produces obedience. And, and, and so, but as we draw closer to his return, I feel this eagerness and, and, and groaning. The whole body, see, we're one body. The, when I say the church, you know, it's, it's this home church. It's you. It, it, it's everybody who, 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 who is, is in Christ Jesus. That's the body. That's the church. It's not a building. It's not assembly of God. It's not the first uh, Feather River Baptist Church down the street. You know, it's the body of Christ, a body of believers who are, are following this and are redeemed the redemption of our body for we were saved in this hope but hope that is seen is not hope for why does one still hope for what he has seized in other words if God and Jesus Christ just came right here and came and shook my hand and laid Jesus Christ laid his hand on me and he said you're saved forevermore I'll see you in heaven there would be nothing to hope for because I've seen it already you, did you catch that but if we hope for what we do not see we eagerly wait for it with perseverance. In other words, you got to persevere and you got to endure to the end so you can be saved. And we don't know how long we got to go into this, but we know that he will protect us and provide for us. How do we know? Because he said, I'm El Shaddai, the God that is more than enough. He's, he's the, the Lord of battle. He's the Lord of all. He, he's the King of kings. He's going to protect and provide for you all the days of your life. And you're going to dwell in the house of the Lord forever. But you might have to persevere some things. But that's through faith. And you know what? Even the faith he gave you. And I'm, I don't know about you, but I'm eagerly awaiting Jesus Christ's uh, return. But what I'm doing in the meantime is trying to reach as many as people as possible to let them know that it wasn't just for me. It was for you also. And 26, watch this, says, Likewise, the Spirit also helps in our weaknesses, for we do not know what we should pray as we are, but the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. <coughs> Excuse me. Sometimes when you got the Holy Spirit, it's literally praying for you. I mean, with me daily. It's literally praying for things that you don't even know you need you know it like next week something may be about to occur in your life it's already praying for next week for you that's why Jesus Christ said don't worry about tomorrow the God already knows well how many people know the Holy Spirit is God's Spirit so it's making intercession for you so and uh, but this so watch this the Spirit is making intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And now he who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the Spirit is because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. So so who's our high priest? Jesus Christ, right? And, 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 and who's making intercession for us? Jesus Christ. And who's he making intercession to? God the Father. And how's he doing it? Through the Spirit. Whose Spirit? God's Spirit. And what Spirit dwells with us? Their Spirit. Did you catch that? How can we lose? We got the we got the Spirit making intercession for us. That was able to beat death. That could create everything with the Word. Was able to seal you with this blessed assurance of hope. Blessed assurance. I'm going to put that song on here too. Blessed assurance and um, I won't go back. Help me remember that Holy Spirit. Uh, and here's one of my favorites, uh, Romans 8, 28. And we know that all things work together for good for those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. See, uh, everything we do has to line up with the will of God. If you're praying for something outside of the will of God, you can pray till the cows come home. You can pray for 20 years. You're never going to receive it because it's outside of the will of God. You pray for something that lines up with the will of God, and if you believe and receive, you will receive it. Delay does not mean denial. It's like my wife. I prayed for her to be healed, and she limped around for, I believe, what, six days, seven, six or seven days, but she was healed. See, she had to persevere that, man. That She had to persevere and endure that to test her faith, and, and, and uh, she went through a little trial, but she never wavered. 
and, and she never got angry. She just believed and received her healing. And then today, it just was manifested. Amen. Is anybody getting anything out of this? Sometimes I feel like I'm talking to a camera. Man, look, this is the living word of God. That is that it can pierce right into your spirit and soul if you receive it as coming from God. Wait till we go into this fast and you you're gonna see a mighty move of God. But I do feel compelled to put this out today. Amongst all the distractions and everything, every day I I say every day take a little step closer towards Jesus. So so what so what works? Have you ever seen the devil try to put something in your life? Like like take for instance, my first channel was Living in Grace. It got attacked and and I ended up bringing it down. And but God turned it around. How many people know? Go check. I got thirty thousand views. I have more views in I believe four months than I had in like a year hello somebody see what the devil tried to destroy me in this ministry God blessed because of my faith and endurance but I had to persevere and have faith and not doubt and realize that it's for God and not me and then I put up a thing that I'm claiming 2,000 souls I set my goals a little higher and I realized that I couldn't do it in my own strength and my own might but I could do it through the spirit as Jesus Christ made an intercession for me this channel now has 30,000 views and you know what? That's by the grace of God who's doing miraculous things. And you know, and it's just the beginning. It's a genesis right now. It's just the beginning of what God has planned for us. For whom he foreknew, because that's his will and his purpose for, for us. For whom he foreknew, let, all right, that he foreknew me, he also predestined me to be conformed into the image of his son. Who's his son? Jesus Christ. What? The very fruit and nature of him. That he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Wherever whom he predestined, the, these he also called. And whom he called, these he also justified. And whom he justified, these he also glorified. And let me tell you something like this. God loves you in 28. God loves you more than you will ever imagine. Your human mind can't comprehend God's agape love of sending his son to leave heaven. His only begotten son. To go down and become, take your sin and your death for you. Tortured, for, tortured by the world. Killed. So that you could live. He died that you, so that you could live eternally. And how many people know there's coming a time where you will be sanctified? You know what that means? You will just, you will just walk in the spirit and the things that used to trip you up won't trip you up anymore. You're just going to walk around and know that you know that you know that you've been justified, who you are in Christ Jesus. And things will come around you and you just rebuke them. Get out of my way. I got a God to serve. And you just won't stumble anymore. <coughs> that day's coming. That outpouring. God's everlasting love. In closing, let's just all take this in and let's begin to, to do, let's take this in in the spirit and the very nature of Jesus Christ who dwells within us. Amen. Let's, I'm going to put my hands up when I read this in 31. What then shall we say to these things? What things? Everything he just wrote. Everything he just went through. Everything he'd been challenged with in his whole ministry. Everything he's writing to all these churches. You know, he's not just talking to himself here. He's writing a letter that would stand the test of time for thousands of years. And we're still reading it and studying it today. Because it's from a holy, sovereign God whose will is to get you to heaven. But he's commanding you to persevere. So what are we going to say about all that today, saints? If God is for us, who can be against us? Why is that a question? He's asking you. He already knows the answer. Trust me. He knew the answer. The Holy Spirit was asking this. He's asking you right now. Look, if God is for you, who can be against you? There is nothing created that God created, including Satan and the devil and the demons and death and hell and the grave that can keep you from God's love. 
But why do we let things keep us from God? We blame it on God. We get mad at God. We get angry at God when people die. Well, it is appointed once for everybody to die. He's just fulfilling his word. And when we blame it on God, and then we go through this, and then we realize, uh, uh, you know, it may be a month, and it may be years. You realize, you know what? I was wrong. I repent. I was wrong. I never, uh, God never left me because it's not his will. Uh, he, he's just performing his word. I left him. Can I get an amen, somebody? God didn't left me. I left him. And when I repented, he was right there for me again. See, there was nothing in between that, even in my backslidden state, even when I was in the occult. That couldn't separate me from the love of God. You know why? Because I'm in Christ Jesus. Because it's his will for me. And so I had to endure some things. And I'm sitting before you here as a minister performing weddings. I'm amazed at what God is doing. If you only knew who, what, who I was when I was 25 and 26, you would literally sit here with your jaw dropped, your eyes wide open, and say, is this really Paul? Honestly. So, like my friend Rob from, from uh, Fairfield, he probably watching this thinking, man, surely that is God. Because Paul couldn't have did what he's doing. He's supposed to be locked up. I'm supposed to be dead. But nothing can separate me from, from the love of God. Why? Because in 32 he said he didn't even spare his own son. In other words, he spared no expense. There was nothing God kept and held back. Here's my son. But delivered him up for us all. You know what delivered him up means? Delivered him up. What? To take your sin and die. To be pierced and slapped and spit on and betrayed. For you. So yeah, I'm going to sacrifice my flesh for the next three days and thank God through it. I'm not going to, uh, oh me, oh I'm hungry. No, I'm going to praise God and thank him that, he's, that he, uh, he counted me worthy. And I'm going to bring him glory. 33, uh, uh, let's go up. Who, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Freely give you all things. What? According to his will. Never pray outside of God's will. Pray what God's word says you can have. And then you can believe it. And then learn to receive it. And you will walk in a way you've never walked before. 34. Remember how it started off? There's no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus at the very beginning of this tape. Probably an hour ago. 34. We're right back to it. Who is he who condemns? It is Christ who died, and furthermore is also risen. In other words, he's no longer dead, hallelujah. People sometimes in their mind, they pray and they picture the cross and the blood on the cross. He's not on that cross. you got to picture that blood pumping through you and the, with the dunamis power. That uh, The same power that rose Christ off the cross is now in you. He's not a dead Jesus on a cross. You see people wearing the cross with Jesus on there. I had a cross in, <coughs> in, 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 in 91 with Jesus on it, and it was pure gold, and it was beautiful, and someone gave it to me. And when I got delivered, you know what I did? I took Jesus off the cross, and I gave the gold to my my brother here's Jesus because I didn't want Jesus on the cross because he's not on that cross man I feel the fire of God falling down in here because of why my faith in knowing who he is and my obedience to him and receiving what he has for me saints because nothing can separate me from his love his agape love is dwelling in this house in this ministry in my life in my future so who is it that's condemning you right now? It is Christ who died and furthermore is also risen and who is even at the right hand of God. You know the right hand resembles authority. Who also makes intercession for us. How can you lose if Jesus Christ beat death, rose up and sits in the full authority of the, the one that created everything and is praying for you? How can you lose? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Now he's talking about Christ. Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril of sword? He's, he's naming everything that he went through. Can be in shipwreck, can be in beaten. Can, no, nothing. That Nothing that is created, <coughs> excuse me, can keep you from what? The love of Christ and the love of God. As it is written, for your sake we are killed all day long, for we are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Because you know what? I'm a sheep and he's the shepherd. That That's actually a prophecy right there. That's why it's in quotes. 
37, it says, yet, yet what? Yet that we are counted into shot or yet. In all these things, what things? Everything we go through in life from the day we were born to this very moment. In all these things, everything you've been through your whole entire life, we are more than conquerors. What does the word conquer do? Do I got time? That's something the Lord wanted me to do. No, I don't. Look up the word conquer. I got to close out. For in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. That's God in Christ. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor death, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. I made it in one hour through distractions and everything.